all right guys hello and welcome to the final episode of season two here in mexico hermanos rodriguez uh, autodromo hermanos rodriguez mexican grand prix and um all the engine parts that we all the components that we were waiting for for this final race we actually had come through so we're slightly ahead of ferrari in the uh performance comparison and um i don't know why i did but i got another major part for the next season when we don't have a regulation change but it won't matter because we're going to f123 after this episode so uh we're coming into mexico on the top of the grid on paper and uh we're gonna see how it goes so we're gonna go right into qualifying skip practice and see how we do All right, so before we get out there, it seems like it's going to be a dry weekend here. So, uh, we'll feel I'm already feeling a lot more confident in what I can do here as uh, we get ready for qualifying. Uh, we're going to go ahead and update our setup accordingly and then get out on the track. All right, so our back end was a little squirrely there through the S's, and Dan ticked him into Q2. Provisional P7 with his time of 118.624. Carlos Sainz running out the top with Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly, and Lewis Hamilton in the Monster Energy Mercedes. And uh, yeah, kind of widespread here. Sergio Perez back in P12, the Max Verstappen P5 here. But. Um, yeah, the back end was a little squirrely for us, and we couldn't really improve our time to get out of Q1. So uh, we're going to have to try to make our way up the back with our uh, set of softs. Uh, we'll probably go to a medium to soft strategy if it will let us. And then uh, see where we will end up in the top 10, because if we can get a double, point, double uh, top 10, then uh, we can probably get back into P6 for the driver standings. And then um, constructor standings, and then possibly P5 if uh, we do better than Renault. So uh, yeah, uh, I dropped down to 11 from the last race. Pierre Gasly takes P10 in the driver standings, just by four points. And then Dan Tictum, uh still sitting there with five points uh, parallel with Yuki Sonoda and the Alphatari. So. Um, if Dan Tictum scores some decent points, he can actually get up to P12 for the driver standings, and that would be a good start for him. But, uh, yeah, that was our qualifying. Uh, shorter than I wanted, but uh, we can only do as best as we could with those S-curves. Um, we just have to be very careful of them throughout the race. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to the main race. Welcome to Mexico City, the most popular city in North America, and home, of course, to the Mexico City Grand Prix. 
It's a sellout crowd as usual here at one of the shortest circuits on the Formula One calendar. And who, I wonder, will they be cheering on the top step of today's podium? The Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, 2.6 miles of track that allows drivers to take full advantage of their cars, reaching speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour and providing lots of opportunities for overtaking. The circuit features 17 corners, 10 to the right and the remaining seven going to the left. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Gasly, Daniel Tickton, and Norris, Mick Schumacher, Albon, Hamilton, and Valtteri Bottas, Ricardo, Oscar Piastri, Yuki Tsunoda, and Stroll, Ocon, Johnson, Guan Yu Zhou, and Kevin Magnussen, Vettel, Latifi, Sainz, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. All right, so we get bumped up a couple grid uh, slots from where we qualified. And uh, coming into Mexico here, if it will load, um, mediums to hards, dry race, and then if there is a safety car, we will run the softs, uh, hoping after uh, lap 17. But uh, yeah, so we will have to uh, take it with a grain of salt here in the final race. Um, and as we remember, we have to kind of fend off Red Bull, so uh, we can see Ferrari try and win the Constructors' Championship. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the race. The formation lap gets underway and every driver will be looking to settle in for the race ahead, making sure that their car is ready for the battle once the lights go out. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. All right, here we are lining up at the grid after our formation lap for the final time of this season. Our five red lights here as we're off to a pretty decent start. A little bit of latency there. I do apologize as Joe Grand Yu makes a position on us and Latifi as well as he makes a move on the inside here. And a um, little bit of high pace coming into first corner as we're go a lot of people are going in third wide. We're taking the inside against the Haas of Magnuson. He takes position against Latifi here coming into turn two. Uh, almost rear ending the Alpha Tower of Yuki Sonoda as we're side by side with Magnuson. He takes the position for us here as we're starting back into P17. Dive down the inside, trying to hold that position against Magnuson as the outside of that turn. And then we're kind of off to the edge here as we're behind Yuki Sonoda. And uh, these S curves are, are really the highlight of this race. These S curves, like I said, the back end squirreling out, I had to take extra precaution here as uh, we're starting to slot into single file as we're still trying to fight against Latifi and Magnuson. As you can see, they were side by side behind us as uh, we're slotting in behind Yuki Sonoda in P15 here as we're coming up to sector three here, trying to round out the end of the lap. And uh, just under a second ahead of Latifi here. But um, 
yeah, it was a very eventful first lap. We lost a few positions, but um, we're getting comfortable here as a single file until we get to our DRS. But moving on to lap four, we're finally able to catch up to Yuki Sonoda here as uh, we dive towards the end. I was going to dive towards the inside here, but there wasn't enough room. Uh, forcing ourselves to the outside, try to give Sonoda his room. We push him too far, a little bit too far into the inside over those curves. As we get that position on him, he's still trying to push back as we come up to the S curves. You can see him in the mirror there backing off as we do solidify that position into P14 on lap 4 against Sonoda. And uh, next up pretty much is the Reno of Esteban Ocon in P13 as we're about a second and a half. So we got a lot of work to do before we have to come into the pits to try to catch up to him because Daniel Ricciardo is there in P12 and Lance Stroll and the other Reno is there as well to round out the uh, next three positions before the top 10. Moving on to the lap A, where we're finally able to try to make a move on Esteban Ocon. We both have DRS here as we push him to the inside lane. We try to make a move on the outside. Uh, we almost hit him in the back here as we do hold our position or momentum here. As uh, coming up to this next straight, we do take that position from him. And I do not believe we get DRS here. Actually, we do. You can see those little purple dots on the the steering wheel there we do end up getting DRS because we were so close behind him before we hit the line uh, going a little wide here trying to get his speed we do get a warning there but moving on to lap 14 when we're trying to make up position against Daniel Ricardo S1 Ocon comes back to try to make a position on us but as we keep him on the inside lane uh, he does hit his brakes a little bit too hard here he uh, slams on his brakes and we take advantage of that position and move on the inside now with DRS behind Daniel Ricardo, he'll be doing what we did earlier against Yuki Sonoda trying to make a move on the inside but he is a little bit too far away but in this next set of turns we do end up moving outside Daniel Ricardo is still holding us off but uh, a little bit too much contact there as uh, we push him over the curbs and we do get another warning for contact with Daniel Ricardo. here's a uh, different camera view here from that contact as we round out this corner you can just see he has to cut inside here uh, to try not to come in contact with us as we take the position from him up into P12 on lap 14 and next up is Lance Stroll in the other Reno but so moving on to lap 16 we're behind Valtteri Bottas we did make that position against Lance Stroll I believe it was earlier this lap but next bet was uh, Valtteri Bonas and I believe our pit stop was next lap for the lap after that but we see Alexander Albon, Lewis Hamilton, Pierre Gasly and uh, Joe Grandy coming in for their pit stop to the hard compound tires and the end of lap 17 turned to game position against Valtteri Bonas before these S curves Leaving Oscar Piastri in the Audi Sport, Charles Leclerc, and then our team in the band Tickham, who has yet to pit up in P4. You can see how difficult these S curves are for us, as our back end is a little bit off of what we uh, really needed for this race here. But uh, currently P7 behind Oscar Piastri, as uh, we're actually coming into the pits at the end of this lap. So. Dan Tickton taking position against Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen goes into the pits as well on this lap. And I don't know what was going on here. It's like we slam into the back of Oscar Piastri, but there's no physical damage. So um, the game just physically stopped us right before we could hit him coming into the pit. And you can see the drain of drivers coming into the pit. So myself, Oscar Piastri, Valerie Bottas, Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll, I believe, as well. Mick Schumacher, all those people coming into the pits, and we actually come out in front of them. We actually only lose one position, uh, technically, against Alexander Albon as Valtteri Bavas comes out behind us. And you can see the train of cars coming out behind us as well. You can see Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll, Oscar Piastri. They're all in a conga line, pretty much. You can see those time frames on them. 
as uh, we continue on with the race. But moving on shortly after we come out of the pits, lap 19, uh, we're kind of in no man's land. You can see the train of cars right there, like I said. And uh, we're coming up to sector two here with the S-curves. And um, with these hard tires trying to get them up to heat, we're basically trying to treat them as best as we can. But uh, at this point, uh, I starting to, you could hear it in the engine, I was starting to little, lose a little bit of engine power. But uh, shortly after that happened, our uh, engine goes kaput here at the finale of our season two here in Mexico. And I thought we were going to hold up Valtteri Bottas again like we did last race, but we didn't. We ended up going on the inside. This is all automatic. Like, I had no control over this car going around the inside, but that's going to round out the end of our race with a fourth DNF, I believe, of the season, and three or four DNFs in a row. I don't quite remember, but that's going to round out the end of our season here in Mexico with a DNF. They've taken the win here as we wrap up another fantastic Formula One season. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them they do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. Now, let's discuss Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Carlos Sainz certainly wasn't someone to scoff about. His ability to follow race strategies throughout with pinpoint precision has to be commended. The Constructors' Championship may be a foregone conclusion at the moment, but regardless, let's look at the standings. And it's another title in the bag for Red Bull after a long and hard-fought season. They've built an astonishing car this year, and the glory they'll be taking back to Milton Keynes is fully deserved. Meanwhile, AlphaTauri's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. All right, so uh, halfway through the race, and we get another engine failure. Um, Dan Tickton finishing right behind us in the driver's standings. And then we bump up the P6 in the Constructors, uh, knocking Renault down to P7. And AlphaTauri outscores us during the race, too. So, yeah, AlphaTauri of Pierre Gasly uh, finishing eighth. Where, uh... No, that's not the right one. Pierre Gasly finishing the fifth ahead of Dan Tictum in sixth place. And, uh, yeah... So we weren't, honestly, we weren't really much help, but uh, I was not expecting four back-to-back -back DNFs to round out the end of the season. So we'll basically see you guys on our series for um, Breaking Point as we finish that. And then I'm going to be starting to work on the uh, preseason episode for our F123 driver career mode. So please keep an eye out for that. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I will making it.
as I'm getting some other people to collaborate with me on doing some voice acting for the series. So uh, a little bit of storyline behind it. So without further ado, this is rounding out the end of the episode and the end of our F122 series. We will see you guys later.